Greetings Pilgrims, welcome back to MGM. My name is Jimmy and today we are going to talk about how to play Trench Crusade. Alright, if you are new to Trench Crusade, I did make a What is a Trench Crusade video. I do recommend checking that out prior to watching this one. In this video, we are going to walk through on the tabletop with some live examples of the current rules, which as of today is 1.3.2. Trench Crusade is still in development, so things are subject to change. If you would like more information about Trench Crusade or you want to follow the game, you can go to TrenchCrusade.com or I highly recommend joining their Facebook group. I believe at this point it is over 7,000 members strong and continues to grow every day. The goal with all of my videos is to help people find new games and things that they may find interesting away from the mainstream tabletop. So if you happen to like this video, be sure to leave a like. If I get anything wrong, be sure you let me know down in the comments. I will pin a comment and then pin all of the changes as well. So if I make any errors, you will be able to go and reference those on this video. I appreciate you being here. Let's learn to play Trench Crusade together. Like any war game you may be familiar with, Trench Crusade is played with miniatures consisting of 10 to 30 models. The system uses 32mm heroic scale, but with most games you can use whatever you want. Trench Crusade is miniature agnostic, and while there will be some official models set to release hopefully later on in the year, I've seen a lot of kit bashes and other things on the Facebook page as people really use whatever they have to bring the game to life. It's a skirmish game, so we're looking at a 3x3 to a 4x4 footprint that has become commonplace. For terrain, you'll want some, either handmade, bought, or 3D printed. You'll need a few things handy, such as a tape measure, six-sided dice, and some extra D6 or tokens to represent blood markers and blessing markers. I'll be using red D6 to track these markers today. Trench Crusade is a pre-measure game, and that means you can measure things out at any time. The game turn is based on alternating activations, where you would take a turn activating a model, and then your opponent, and so on. Once you activate a model, it can move and take any actions that it may, using special skills and equipment as you see fit. The player with the lowest model count will decide who will start each turn. If both players have the same number of models on the table, just roll a d6 each and pick the highest. When all models have activated, the turn is over. Now we talked about actions, and once activated, a model can make as many actions as they can as long as they are different actions. There are some common or universal actions that everyone can do. That includes move, charge, dash, climb, retreat from combat, and attack with a ranged or melee weapon. In addition, there may be faction-specific actions you can take or even model-specific actions. Sometimes an action may be risky. For example, climbing is a risky action. In order to climb, you need to roll on the action success chart. Roll 2d6 and consult the table. A 2 to 6 is a failure, a 7 to 11 is a success, and a 12 plus is a critical success, which we'll discuss later. The action success chart is used frequently throughout the game and will be a key reference and core mechanic. We'll talk about each action in detail but before we get into that, let's check out the model profile. You'll see the name of the model, its movement, what type of model it is, dice modification for ranged and melee, which we'll discuss later, and you'll also see its armor and the base size. You'll also see what equipment they can be equipped with and any abilities they have. For the first action we'll discuss, it'll be the move, and the bottle may move its full movement speed. Note that you cannot move if you charge. This trench pilgrim, for example, has a move of 6 inches. Measure from the base and place it down like so. As a note, you cannot move within 1 inch of an enemy unless you charge. You can move through friendly models, but you cannot land on top of them. You can never move off the battlefield unless rules specifically state otherwise. And when moving across difficult terrain, movement costs doubles. So every 1 inch you move costs 2 inches of movement. If you move into dangerous terrain such as barbed wire, minefields, and more, it's a risky action, which we previously discussed. Next we have charge. 
A player can choose to charge instead of move. Choose an enemy model within your line of sight and check to see if the target is within 12 inches. If they are, roll a d6 and add the result to your model's movement speed. Charging must be by the most direct route possible. If you can get within one inch of your target, you are engaged. You may charge more than one model if you can get within one inch of them. If you can't reach your opponent because you do not roll high enough, you simply move the distance indicated by your movement plus your d6 roll. If you fail a charge, you may not shoot. If you do not have line of sight to your target, it is considered a risky action. Next we have Dash, and all models, unless otherwise noted, can move a second time up to their full movement speed if they pass a risky action test, which we discussed. This can be done in addition to a normal move or charge. In this particular example, I fail, and if that happens, then the activation of the model will always end, and it now goes over to my opponent. Next we'll talk about climbing, and a model may climb as part of their normal move not dash. You will need to roll for a risky action, and the model must clear the entire sheer surface with its movement speed. In this example, the fighter rolled up a 9 and is able to move up to the next level. If this risky action test failed, the model would remain where it is, and the turn would go over to your opponent. A model can also jump over gaps up to half their movement characteristic. This is a risky action as well. In this example, the model rolled a 9 and is able to successfully jump the gap. Had he had failed, however, he would fall and then roll on the injury chart, which we will discuss later. Any fall from a height would require a roll on the injury chart, and you will get plus dice for every full 3 inches you fall, which we will cover in just a moment. A model can also jump down voluntarily up to 3 inches with no ill effect or reduction to their movement. If this jump down is part of a charge, it is considered a risky action, but you will get some bonuses to your attack. The next action we have is retreat from combat, and a model may move away from an enemy model they are engaged with. In doing so, however, all enemy models will be able to take a melee action against the retreating model. You will resolve the effects of this attack before moving the retreating model. Enemy models can do this even if they have been activated previously this turn. Shooting, which we've discussed previously, requires a roll on the action success chart. If a model has a ranged weapon and is not engaged with an enemy, you can target an enemy model to shoot. As a note, you cannot make a charge after you make a shooting attack unless the weapon has the assault keyword. In this example, it is a miss, but had the shot of hit, you would then roll on the injury chart. The last common action is to attack with a melee weapon, which we'll discuss in detail. Before we get any further, we need to talk about dice pool modification. This is referred to as plus and minus dice. Rules and weapons often have modifiers. For example, shooting from an elevated position is plus one dice to ranged enemies below. A model's profile may also have plus and minus dice on their weapon profiles. Let's take a look at a simple example using this trench pilgrim. He declares he will shoot this target from an elevated position. He can clearly see the target, and the target is within his weapon's range. Normally, we roll 2d6 on the action success chart. However, since you are elevated, you get plus one dice. Instead of rolling 2d6, you roll 3d6 and picked the highest two. Having plus dice increases your chance of success, and in this case, the trench pilgrim hits the target. If you had some other bonus that gives you a plus dice, you would roll 4d6, and so on. The more plus dice you have, you continue to add dice to your pool and pick the two highest. The minus dice works in reverse. You still add a d6 to your pool, but if you are minus dice, you pick the two lowest dice rolled and consult the chart. In the example on the screen, there is a minus dice given because the target is in cover. So we add 1d6 and we roll them all, picking the lowest two this time as we are at minus dice. The shot is still a hit. The key concept to remember is no matter if you are plus or minus dice, you are still adding d6s to the pool. And if you're plus dice, you have a better chance to hit. If you're minus dice, you're going to have a worse chance to hit. 
Now, plus and minus dice can also cancel each other out. For example, this trench pilgrim is now shooting down at his target in cover. While he gets plus one dice for being in elevated position, he is going to get minus one dice for the target being in cover. Those two will cancel each other out, and it's just a 2d6 roll on the action success chart. The key takeaway here is after you're done canceling out all the modifiers, if you were at plus dice, then you're going to add d6 to the pool, taking the two highest, and if you're minus dice, then you're going to add a d6 to the pool, taking the two lowest. In our example, there was a plus and a minus, so it was just an even roll. Now, we'll continue to talk about shooting and combat in a moment, but a key mechanic of the game is blood markers. Blood markers represent stress, fatigue, and wounds that your model is taking on the tabletop. With the example of my trench pilgrim shooting at a model in cover, it is going to be minus dice, so rolling 3d6 and taking the lowest, and the shot is a miss, but let's say that this was a hit. If you successfully hit your model, your next step is to roll on the injury chart. You roll 2d6 with any plus or minus dice from the model's profile or other sources and pick the two highest if you're at plus dice or the two lowest if you're at minus dice and consult the following table. On pretty much anything but a 1, you're going to take a blood marker or go out of action. Let's say I rolled another 8 that you see on the screen now. The Witchburner does have heavy armor, which is minus 2 to this injury roll. If I roll an 8, his armor is going to make that a 6, which will give him one blood marker. It's a minor hit, but the Witchburner will be affected by this. Blood markers are capped at 6 per model, but they're extremely important because let's say this Witchburner was going to shoot back. His opponent can declare that he is going to spend the blood marker to give him negative dice. So the Witchburner, normally rolling 2d6, now rolls 3d6 and will take the two lowest, making it harder to hit. You can use multiple blood markers in this way, and once you do, the blood markers are removed. Let's take another example and say this Trench Pilgrim has two blood markers on him and is looking to shoot at this Witchburner General, which is in cover. The cover confers minus one dice, so we add another d6 to the pool. And then the Witchburner General says, I'm going to use both blood markers, adding two more d6 to the pool. You roll all of those and take the lowest. So now it is extremely hard for the Pilgrim to hit. In this example, it was successful as the shot is a miss. In another example, let's say that the Trench Pilgrim was firing down at the Witchburner General, getting plus one dice for his elevated position. His opponent uses one blood marker to cancel out the plus dice with a negative dice. His opponent then decides to use the other blood marker to put him at a disadvantage minus dice. So now it's 3d6, taking the lowest, and because of that, the shot is a miss. Now let's say the shot did hit. The Witchburner General has a blood marker on him as well. Another way to use these blood markers is you can add plus dice to the injury roll. At plus dice, you pick the two highest. In this example, it is a nine, but the heavy armor confers a minus two, which takes this down to a seven. The Witchburner General is still going to go down. If not for the heavy armor, however, he would have went out of action on a nine plus. Lastly, blood markers can also be used to reduce the effectiveness of armor by one if the opponent is already down. For example, if you are shooting at an opponent that is down, you could expend a blood marker to reduce heavy armor, so instead of, of it being a minus 2, it is a minus 1. Blood markers are extremely flavorful and keep both players engaged at all times. Now along with blood markers, there are also blessing markers, and these work exactly the opposite, and they aid in the actions of models. Next we have melee combat, and if you're within one inch of one or more enemies, then declare your action and roll on the action success chart. Add any modifiers from any sources, such as blood markers on your target if you choose. If the result is successful, roll on the injury chart to determine what happens, unless some equipment or special ability on the model says otherwise. Generally, you will only make one attack in melee, but note that some can execute multiple attacks, 
For example, a model with two melee weapons or a pistol and a melee weapon can execute an additional attack with its second weapon. In doing so, one of the attacks chosen by the player suffers minus one dice. Resolve the attacks one at a time. In this example, the Trench Pilgrim rolled to hit and rolled a 10 on the injury chart. The Witchburner is in heavy armor, so it's an 8, which is a down result. In another example, the Trench Pilgrim has a blood marker, so his opponent decides to use it, giving him minus dice. He adds a d6 to the pool, takes the two lowest, and the result is going to be a miss. In another example, both of these warriors have blood markers. The Trench Pilgrim makes an attack. The Witchburner expends his blood marker, giving him minus dice. 3d6 are rolled, taking the lowest. The result is still a hit. The Trench Pilgrim can then expend the Witchburner's blood marker to add plus dice to the injury roll. So we'll add in a d6, and since we're at plus dice, we will take the two highest, and the result is a 7. Heavy Armor makes this down result a minor hit. Let's say that they were fighting over an obstacle. The obstacle is pretty simple, it just confers a minus dice, so add a d6 to the pool, roll them up, and take the two lowest. In this example, the result is still a hit. A roll on the injury table is a 10, which is normally an out of action, but with heavy armor, that will be a down result. Now, let's talk about down. A warrior that is down is placed face down on the tabletop and immediately gains a blood marker. If a model is already down, it still suffers the additional blood marker and remains down. Any injury rolls against a down model in melee are made with an additional plus dice, or reducing the effectiveness of any armor by one as the attacker's choice. A downed warrior adds minus dice to any of its actions until they stand up, making it far less likely to succeed. During its next activation, a downed warrior can stand up, but all types of movement it takes, whether that be a move, dash, charge, jump, etc., is at half distance rounding down. A model that is down cannot move at all during its activation. If a model goes down within an inch of a ledge, they must roll on the action success chart. On a successful roll, the model goes down where it is. On a fail, the model falls from the elevated position and must roll on the injury chart if the height was more than two inches. For each three inches you fall, add plus one dice to the injury roll. In this example, the Trench Pilgrim passes, so it would go down where it is. However, let's say that he did indeed fail this roll. The Trench Pilgrim would fall and get plus one dice for every three whole inches he fell. This terrain is five inches tall, so it would be one plus dice. We would roll those 3d6 on the injury chart, taking the two highest. In this case, it would be an 8. This would confer an additional blood marker, and the model would stay down, depending on what kind of armor he was wearing. To wrap up, we look at morale. If at least half of your warband is down or out of action, roll on the action success chart. If you fail, your warband routes and loses the battle. If both players are required to test, the model with the lowest model count on the table goes first. And well, that wraps up this How to Play Trench Crusade video. You should now have a firm grasp on the mechanics through the examples provided. There are several keywords you will want to familiarize yourself with. For example, some models are tough, which treats out of action as downed instead. It's hard to cover everything in detail, so I urge you to download the free rules on TrenchCrusade.com and have a look for yourself. There's numerous warbands that are now starting to release. You will find campaign rules on the Facebook page, and as you play through the campaign, you will be rolling on serious injury charts, and things will carry over from game to game, similar to a few other games that I love to play. Of course, you can stay tuned here, and we'll discuss how to create a warband in future videos. We'll also discuss the campaign mechanics, which I'm really the most excited about. I would like to once again thank you so much for watching the video. Supporters Club, your names are on the screen now. Really appreciate your support. It's by no means necessary. If you'd like any information on that, a link will be down in the description below. I ask for absolutely nothing. I look forward to seeing you in the trenches very soon. Take care.